Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Doing an update to my powder storage test. I have uh, numerous videos about this, but I will go ahead and summarize it. Uh, gosh, at this point, <clears throat> a year and a half ago, um, I opened up this jug of RL26, removed a bunch of powder so I can get the powder column to about a quarter to halfway, um, basically to make room for a Kestrel drop which is a device that you actually put inside the jug to measure temperature, humidity, uh, barometric pressure, etc. Let's see if I can pull that puppy out to show you. I made a special tool to <laughs> grab the drop, uh, but it can be challenging at times to get it just right, but got it. Anyway, so yeah, this is the <clears throat> the device that I put in there. It's called the Kestrel Drop. It's a very convenient little device to be able to place into areas wherever you want to measure temperature, humidity. A lot different than <clears throat> the handheld Kestrel. As you can see, the size is way different. So I don't want to put a handheld Kestrel in there. Just a drop. That just gives me a readout of, you know, temperature, humidity, etc. And... Um, they have a nice nifty app and it uh, you connect it to the Bluetooth and then um, it'll display the data for you. So, um, and I put made this a super little fireproof sort of container um, to drop it in just, just in case, um, I don't know, you know, it's an electrical device. I don't want it, <laughs> for whatever reason, it has a tiny little spark somewhere. Uh, I don't want it to, you know, burn up all my RL-26 and whatever else is in the garage. So, anyway, <clears throat> so I drop it in there, closed it up, and actually um, placed it outside of my home for a significant uh, proportion of the winter months in the Pacific Northwest where the humidity gets to... Um, pretty much 90 to 100 percent for several months in a row uh, periodically you may have a dip down in the 70s or 80s uh, in terms of relative humidity but um, definitely on the high side put it out there for several months was monitoring to see whether humidity got in the jug and um, found no evidence that actually humidity was penetrating the jug um, what was penetrating the jug was temperature. So whatever the outside temperature was outside of this jug, the inside temperature was the same inside the jug. But whatever the humidity was outside of the jug was not the same as the humidity inside the jug. Inside the jug, it maintained a humidity somewhere around like 62%, 62, 63%. And it did that pretty much consistently um, for uh, several months, all throughout the winter months, all throughout spring, fall. Um, last summer, it was all the same. Um, basically, humidity was not getting into the jug whatsoever. Um, here's some of the data you can see. Oh, that's when the battery went dead. That's another thing, too, with this. If you utilize what I'm utilizing to drop, be careful how much data you, accrue, you, you set it to accrue. Because if I set it to collect, you know, all this data in every 10 minutes, that battery is going to run dead fast. And in fact, I think I've changed the battery on this thing uh, probably six or seven times in the year and a half that I've had it. But that was because the for the first year, I had it set at collecting data every 10 minutes, which Frankly, for this test was a waste of time um, and a waste of battery. Um, and so I set it to 30 minutes and now I'm getting better battery life and I'm not getting dead batteries like, like I used to all the time. Um, and you don't need to collect every 10 minutes when you're doing this kind of test. Um, frankly, I can probably set it at, to collect every four hours if I wanted to, but I like a lot of data, so what the heck. Anyway, um, as you can see, this is the relative humidity in, of, that's being recorded inside this jug, and it's pretty much stayed the same, um, 624 to 62.7% is pretty much the average. Um, I used the kest this Kestrel to measure 
humidity outside the jug um, and uh, we have humidities above 60 percent above 70 percent there uh, back down to 60 uh, back up to 65 almost 70 so um, this jug again has sat uh, outside in extreme high humidity environments for several months um, has sat in my garage for several months re most recent months where my garage is you know above 63 percent humidity most of the time um, yet the jug here inside um, isn't getting any penetration of that high humidity and from that high humidity environment it's keeping kind of its own atmosphere in terms of humidity inside this jug um, the jug itself is what's called an HDPE jug. Uh, it's the type of plastic that they use in pharmaceuticals um, with it when they put medication pills inside containers. Um, and the reason why they prefer HDPE is because humidity does not get into these kind of jugs. So, um, and they know most, <coughs> excuse me, most pharmaceutical uh, pill bottles are going to be located in like a bathroom type of environment. They call it the medicine cabinet. And they know that bathroom type environments um, can be very humid because there's a shower in there and things like that. Um, and so they, they use HDPE jugs specifically for that reason and other reasons. They're pretty durable. Um, they don't make a lot of noise when something inside of it is shuffling around, other things. Um, uh, for that reason. They also use HDPE for milk jugs because again, humidity doesn't get in, but it changes with the temperature. So when you put that milk jug inside the refrigerator, the milk inside gets to the temperature that the refrigerator is. Um, and so anyway, there's lots of good reasons why powder companies and, and other, um, you know, other um, in, in industries have utilized HDPE uh, because it is extremely impervious to um, the humidity on the outside and uh, anyway so there you go I mean I'm up to about a year and a half of doing this and again I don't I mean I don't see any appreciable difference in the um, amount <clears throat> of humidity that is getting um, inside this jug it definitely does not match the external humidity so you know if I had three months of um, exposing this jug outside of my home for three months in, you know, 80 to 100% humidity. All throughout that time, the humidity in the jug stayed around 62%. Um, so it's not getting any humidity penetration. I've had a lot of people say, oh, hey, you know, what do you think about putting um, uh, packets, humidity control packets inside the jug? And I, I have no idea why you would do that. Um, it, seems like uh i mean i guess you could if you wanted your humidity in your jug to be a certain level but uh you don't need that to actually have the standard humidity um be consistent um in in you know high humid environment so um i i see absolutely no need to do that i'm not sure why anyone would do that um again unless you believe for whatever reason that your powder performs better you know at a lower or higher humidity um, well actually with those packets you're, you're going to lower the humidity so i mean you if, if you want it to you know your powder to you know have lower humidity go right ahead but if you don't then there's no reason to use those packets because the jug itself maintains uh, the level of humidity that uh, it does from its baseline from when you open it so anyway, well, there you go. There's an update on that. Um, we'll keep doing periodic updates on this. Maybe I'll switch the data to accrue data every four hours or so so that I can get some better battery life at the, uh, out of this. Looks like I have it set for one hour now. Uh, maybe set it for four. Because again, I've been doing this for a year and a half and I've seen uh, zero evidence that the external humidity is getting into the jug. So I'm not really wanting to waste too much battery life now at this point anyway so <clears throat> everybody please um subscribe like and share also check out again bruce teal um he's putting up a lot of new cool videos and also please come to my patreon and become a patron i i put up tons of videos on there um i'm open for comments on patreon 
I've closed my comments on YouTube at this point. Um, I get a lot of really good support from Patreon, from my patrons. So I'm opening up that for comment and I'm putting up tons of videos and other things. So would love to have you come on to Patreon. All right, everyone. Thank you and take care.